Hello again. Uh, a couple of, couple of uh, students were asking me questions about this problem specifically that I give in, in class. So I just didn't want to answer on my Facebook group directly. Uh, I thought to make a video because uh, I feel that will help them and uh, other people that might need it. So feels good that I'm solving it using this video. However, the problem goes as follows. It's a 75 ohm uh, lossless line is 0.6 wavelength long. If S or VSWR, different books use different uh, variables for it. So S is really VSWR, which is voltage standing wave ratio of 1.8. And uh, reflection angle of minus 60 degrees. What's find using Smith's chart the reflection coefficient magnitude of it and the load impedance in Z end which is the input impedance so let's start with what's given and basically what's given is our VSW value which we all know uh, it's a 1.8 so it starts here which we all know it's at the uh, resistance component axis and usually usually the load impedance is given and this way we're working in reverse and uh, basically it's easy to obtain however we start with what's given what's given is the voltage standard wave ratio of 1.8 which I just put here with that reddish color uh, and the next step is to draw a circle which is the VSWR circle and obviously you start with your uh, needle of the compass starts at 1 I don't have a compass here but I have these little dots that I traced earlier so basically we're trying to draw a circle which is the VSWR circle it's not a perfect circle But it's good enough to actually solve the problem. This is the VSWR circle. And what else is given is our is the uh, reflection coefficient angle. We can use the blue color of minus 60 degrees, and minus 60 degrees is obviously found here. So this is the point. We draw a line crossing from the one. Trying to get to the 60 basically. Okay, and I don't have a ruler, it's best to draw with a ruler. And the point that meets your VSA, VSWR circle is actually your load impedance, but it's the uh, normalized load impedance. But somewhere here, the line wasn't straight, so it's somewhere here. So, all right. So that's your normalized uh, load impedance, and we need to find that value, as the question suggests. So your normalized load impedance, load impedance is looking at the resistance component value, which curve it goes. That's the 1.2 curve, as you can see. It's a little bit under that, so we can say it's. Uh, 1.1 something let's say it's 1.5 approximately so this is just an approximate number obviously if I use the ruler it would have probably been even less if it's here then it's actually 1.2 or 1.2 approximately so it's approximately 1.2 for a resistance value and we need our resistance component value 
and now we need obviously our reactants component value and it's on the negative end and if we draw it comes from which curve you can see it's a little bit more it's sorry it's on this curve that's the curve for it so it's a 0 0.6 and a little bit above 0 0.6 so and it's a negative number so your reactance value is minus j 0 0.6 five approximately so now we have our, our normalized load impedance and obviously to get your actual value your load impedance you multiply it by the characteristic you, mu you multiply by your characteristic uh, transmission line impedance which is 75 ohms and your final answer will be approximately 86 point something minus j the values are not precise but 46 point something ohms so that's how you get your z load obviously now for the reflection coefficient you measure this line you can use another color you, me you measure the length from the origin Use purple to your Z load. You can do it this way, and and that measurement is approximately. Oh, I don't have the rest. So you divide. Uh, since I don't have a ruler, I'm not going to measure right now. But the idea is to divide this length over from the center all the way. To this point, which is your angle of reflection coefficient degrees curve, it starts it starts at this point. So that's where you actually stop. Earlier in my previous tutorial, I stopped it here, but I explained it in an annotation and in class that should stop here. Anyways, you stop. You divide this length over this length, or the other method will be using the actual from the complete Smith chart, however we don't have it here and it's just with you just you just take this length this length here and you find in that scale what would be your reflection coefficient magnitude however for this one it's just this divide by that and that's how you get your reflection coefficient value uh, and magnitude for Z in for Z, then all you have to do is depending on the question. So it's a 0.6 wavelength long. So you want to move towards the generator 0.6 wavelength long. So the, this whole the whole Smith chart uh, circle is 0.5 wavelength. So it, it goes through one circle and it goes from and we're talking about going from we're talking about going from the load line point 0.6 wavelength so it's gonna circle at once 0.5 what we're remaining with is 0.1 and that will leave us with um, a point four something wavelength location for your input impedance which is 0.43 so you move 0.1 and it stops at 0.43 something. Let's say it's here. So that's your 0.1 wavelength movement. And then you draw a straight line, just like how we did with the input impedance, all the way to the center. And then your input impedance will be somewhere here. Don't know the value because I'm not using straight lines. It's not fair to give you wrong answers. However, that's the way to do it. Thank you. Hope this helps.